Hey everybody, I'm meteorologist Candace Campos in for Jonathan Kegis. He has the weekend off, but with the tropics heating up pretty quickly for the start of November, yes, it's still hurricane season. I wanted to show you something that, especially across the Caribbean, the Bahamas and Florida, all should be keeping a very close eye on. So let's get to the maps and show you not one, but two areas we're watching, but one primarily for significant impacts uh, for the next couple of days. So let's look at the five day tropical development. You can see the one in the central Atlantic there on the top right right side of your screen has a 70% chance of development in the next couple of days could get the name either Nicole or Owen but does depend on which one gets a name first because we do have another area that is merged from the Caribbean now moving into the Atlantic just north of Puerto Rico and that is what we are going to continue to keep a very close eye on for folks who live in the Bahamas and up and down the east coast of Florida as of now, the National Hurricane Center is also giving that a high chance of development into a possible tropical depression or tropical storm, even subtropical storm could be a possibility. Want to show you what the radar looks like right now in Puerto Rico, just a couple of scattered showers as the system really hasn't developed tropically just yet. But computer models are in pretty good agreement that it will continue to develop more tropically in the upcoming days. So you can see we are now watching it as an invest, uh, which is basically an area that the National Hurricane Center will start uh, taking flights into those hurricane hunter missions to get a better idea and the health of this area of low pressure that will again start to become more tropical. It doesn't look very symmetrical, doesn't look very organized just yet, but it will be moving into more favorable conditions. That basically means the wind shear won't be too bad, the dry air will start to lessen a little bit, and uh, the waters are still very warm. Even for the uh, start of November, it's been warming up for the last couple of months. So the combination of all of that means that we could see pretty quick intensification, strengthening of this area of low pressure, this one zone here. So I wanted to widen out the view here, give you a better idea of the satellite and radar composite, because a lot of people are wondering, what does this look like for the next couple of days? What's the possible scenarios as well? But as the system continues to make its way further to the north, it's going to run into a big bully in the weather system, right? It's a big ridge of high pressure, and it's a strong one. Check it out. You can see it to the north there. It's going to hold very firm. So as that low makes its way further to the north, it starts to develop becomes more tropical, starts wrapping around that tropical moisture towards its center, it will just ram right into that big ridge of high pressure. And the winds around the ridge are clockwise, meaning you can see the winds will start pushing it more towards the west, southwest, right into the Bahamas and into east central or even south florida in the upcoming days so of course that is basically the ingredients computer models are in good agreement that it will start taking more of that westerly southwesterly jog by tuesday and to wednesday but the exact strength and the timing of it is still kind of up in the air the national hurricane center uh, watches several hundreds of models and i'll show you two of the ones that we really uh, primarily focus on for you guys you can see here that that kind of uh, red blob there is what the National Hurricane Center is anticipating the track to possibly be in the upcoming days. We don't have a forecast cone. We don't have uh, computer models just yet. It was uh, called an invest just a couple minutes ago. So we're slowly starting to get that. It, we're starting to intake some of the computer models. And we, of course, will be bringing it to you. So make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we, of course, will continue to keep you updated on YouTube. And, of course, click Orlando.com. That's also a great resource as the tropics continue to heat up. All right. So let's talk about the next thing that we uh, kind of keep a close eye on. And that's going to be those computer models for the next couple of days. Um, once again, this is Invest 98L. This is just the one that we have right now in our system. We'll continue to get them in and give you a better idea. But I wanted to show this to you because look at the zig and the zag that this one computer model is showing. And I'll show you now the European and the American models to kind of give you a, uh, a better idea of what we're talking about. This is the European model. You can see starts to close up that center, possibly tropical maybe subtropical. We'll have to wait and see. But I stopped the clock here where this center or pseudo center, depending on how it, this system develops, will be approaching uh, the southern east coast of Florida by Thursday morning, late Wednesday night and into Thursday morning as some type of system. Will it be named? Will it be a strong tropical storm? Could this be Nicole? Could this be Owen? Again, a lot of uh, 
a lot of things have to happen in the next couple of days for us to get a better idea of that. So that is the European. Let's look at the American. Takes it north, then turns it really quickly towards the south and east, moving onshore, possibly across central to south east coast of Florida. But this also could continue to hold together the GFS even holding it, moving it into the panhandle, potentially. This is a little later than the European model. This is more about 8 a.m. on Thursday. The Canadian model takes it even slower, pushing it in more Thursday afternoon to the evening. So this is kind of a side by side because a lot of people love to ask meteorologists, what's the best model? Which one is always right? If we knew which one was right, we'd always go with that one. So certain models do better earlier in the season. Some do better later in the season. Some do better in versus storms in the Caribbean versus the Atlantic. So we have to basically take all these computer models and give us the best guesstimate of where this is going to go. So that's what the National Hurricane Center will be doing. And we'll get a better idea as those computer models continue to feed into our systems of what this area, tropical, subtropical, could be doing the next couple of days. So here is that side by side of kind of our two favorite. We get the European and we have the American models side by side. I mean, they're not very much in disagreement, but of course, depending on what strength they are and exactly the track will bring significant impacts to folks. Uh, if you're watching us from the Bahamas, the northern and southern Bahamas, you guys are all going to be uh, keeping a very close eye on this system. For folks in the Caribbean, Central America, the Windward and Leeward Islands, this is not going to be your storm. You guys have had plenty of, of activity over the past couple of months. You can see here, this is the 2022 list. Uh, we've had um, Hurricane Ian as a Category 4. We had Fiona, remember that, as a Category 4 storm. So the problem is, especially with Hurricane Ian, this is going to be, this next system will be moving into areas that are still dealing with impacts from Hurricane Ian. We still have uh, flooding issues up and down the St. John's River for those watching us from Florida, uh, along the coastline, the East Coast, still dealing with a lot of beach erosion. So this is another view. So you have to imagine the atmosphere as a big old sandwich. We got the upper levels, the middle levels, and the surface. So the water vapor imagery gives us a good view from the top. That's the upper level low, um, the upper level winds. And we are also watching an upper level low that is going to add to the mix of this very complicated kind of wonky forecast for the next few days. So at upper level low under it is that surface low and that's going to help spin up the uh, that surface low. We'll call it the area of concern just to make things easy. But as that area of concern down at the surface is going to get picked up by that low, that low is going to send it to that big ridge to the north that we just talked about. And that is why it's going to make that really weird kind of curve towards the Bahamas and uh, the east coast of Florida in, in the upcoming days. So right now, winds for your Sunday, not bad. We're going to kind of localize this now across uh, cen central Florida, east central Florida, as that's where we are stationed. Um, but right now, winds not too bad. It will be gusty at times, especially along the coast. You can see um, as of Sunday morning, the winds between 10 to 15 miles per hour, just kind of a blustery afternoon. But this is uh, what we're forecasting. This is the European model with our winds uh, showing by about Tuesday. Look at your sustained winds between 20 to 25 miles per hour, stronger along the coastline and will continue to gear up even higher. We're talking 30 to 35 mile per hour wind speeds, possibly by your Tuesday and into Wednesday and even stronger Wednesday into Thursday as that system continues to approach. So what are the main hazards? The main hazards we are already starting to see is along our beaches. For your Sunday and into Monday, rough seas, we're talking five to six foot seas, they will be even higher um, throughout Wednesday and Thursday. Nearshore waters can get up to about eight to nine foot seas, even higher offshore, seven to nine foot breaking waves. And the reason why we really focus on the breaking waves is going to be how much it's going to eat away at all already a very um, destroyed beach along the east coast of central Florida. Areas like Flagler and Volusia, there are some, some areas that have not been able to recover from the beach erosion from Hurricane Ian. So you start breaking waves at a seven to nine foot breaking waves, especially at high tides. Coastal flooding could be a big issue as well as additional beach erosion, just aggravating already uh, the cleanup that is uh, still happening after Category 4 Hurricane Ian made its way uh, on shore back in early September. Along with um, 
coastal issues. Rain is also going to be an issue. Uh, flooding, we saw, I mean, record rainfall from Hurricane Ian. A lot of our rivers and our lakes are still very swollen uh, from, from all that tropical rain. And we're going to add to that, unfortunately, come Wednesday and Thursday. So if you're watching us in an area that dealt with flooding already from Hurricane Ian, uh, you might want to just take the extra precautions to make sure to... Uh, have the sandbags nearby uh, making those plans just in case as models are still in disagreement of how much rain we could see because the system really hasn't developed yet um it, we will get start getting a better handle as we start getting more of those hurricane hunters investigating that uh, that area but for now tuesday is election day <laughs> too so uh that also adds to the craziness of the week but come wednesday and thursday we will see those rain chances increase significantly up to 50 to 70 percent Besides the heavy torrential downpours that you see in a tropical system, lightning usually isn't the biggest culprit. Gusty winds, as you saw with the, the uh, modeling there, could certainly be a possibility. Low risk when it comes to tornadoes and hail. So once again, uh, beach hazards still will be the biggest impact starting already this weekend, Monday and Tuesday, turning more squally weather. That means those gusty winds that will kind of whip up pretty quickly, bring some big time rain rough up uh, some of our um, the trees you'll see uh, some tree branches down after hurricane ian a lot of cleanup has been done with a lot of the debris but there's still a lot out there so again even though a lot of floridians folks in the bahamas as well we, we are sometimes kind of scuff at the idea of a tropical storm like oh it's just a tropical storm uh, you could think that but unfortunately we have a lot of folks in our in our neighborhoods here in east central florida that are still have a lot of their household items out in the curb after uh, dealing with flooding or other wind damage from Hurricane Ian. So, of course, we are going to continue to keep you updated on this possible system. It doesn't have a name. We'll call it, call it uh, the area of concern there in the tropics. Throughout the next couple of days, we'll continue to give you updates here on our YouTube channel. So once again, like and subscribe. You know how to do it right there at the bottom of the screen. So make sure you stay tuned here with News 6. Click Orlando.com. And don't worry, Jonathan Kegis, he will be back updating you on everything you need to know with your uh, Sunday Tropic Watch right here on News 6 and on YouTube. Hope everyone has a great day and keep tuned.